a million things to get to. Literally a million. Okay, let's start with the craziest rumor of all that is circulating. And yes, I am drinking peppermint tea on a day that's 100 degrees here in Los Angeles. I don't care. I got to have my tea. I got my tea on. All right. Did everybody see the news yesterday that Bachelor at alum Josh Cedar was dead at the age of 36, only to wake up this morning after dozens, dozens of tributes came in to find out that he's still alive and well and claims that his Instagram was hacked? I, 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 I don't even know what to make of this because, dude, like, I don't know where this dude goes from here. I mean, is anyone buying this story that that somebody hacked him? I mean, I want to see proof. This is like the racist bots to me on RHOBH last season. Like, somebody better be following up. This is crazy. I was messaging other 90 day fiance and TLC creators going, hey, oh, my God, you know, because they've come out of the woodwork. They put on their social media that that they were friends with Josh. I didn't know Josh Cedar. And by the way, I've only watched one season of The Bachelor, that whole franchise with Matt James. Otherwise, I never got into it. I, I just didn't care. I never watched, right? So I never saw Josh on it. The reason that we're talking about it on today's TLC talk is because Josh crossed over and was sort of in the past couple of years well-known for his shenanigans with 90 Day Fiance people. Most notably on my show, Natalie Mortsadova, who, you know, you know Natalie from 90 Day Fiance. She was with Michael out in Washington State. Y'all, she got up to Washington State, that podunk. I mean, nothing against Washington State. I'm from Maine, but you know what I'm saying. We got a lot of trees. She wouldn't have any of it. So she's like, she's become like a 90 day fiance, fran like, you know, franchise fan. They have her on tons of other shows. She lives out here in Los Angeles in Long Beach. So she's been on the podcast. She came into my studio. And she had this run in with Josh Cedar. And all I'm, gonna, I'm not going to get into details. I work very closely, closely with the TLC network, who I love. But there was a lot of debate about asking about or bringing up Josh's name, okay? And that will just lend it to Josh's been all over. I believe he had, like, he dabbled in law. He was on The Bachelorette. He most notably crossed over to the 90-day fiancé realm because everybody knows Paul Steele and Karini Martins. Remember them? Very... They're going through a horrible situation still where they lost custody of their two sons. She's like back in Brazil. Well, she dated Josh for a period of time. He came on social media basically saying he was going to help her get her sons back, all of which like never happened, you know, all of that. Uh, you know, I believe he's like been very open. He's done porn. He's been with dudes. So anyhow, there's a lot, there's a lot going on there. And he's been very open about his mental health struggles, right? Including even discussions of suicide. So yesterday, it is posted on his Instagram. I mean, I thought he was dead. Like, this is wild. And what's scary is, I don't know, this is the second kind of public figure that's done it. You know, the other one was that, oh God, what was her name? Little Xanax or something. Oh, let me find Josh's stuff first. Then we'll get into that other chick. I just feel like, oh, is this for publicity? Oh, well, it's deleted. Of course. But anyway, it was the statement like from his alleged family. It's like very sad. He passed away. He died. This was posted on his IG account only for him to post today that he is alive and well. Okay. Well, and he says that he has been hacked, that these, that somebody got on there and alleged that he was dead. Who would want to do that? Like, I just, I, like, I mean, I, I feel like if people are going to do that, aren't they going to prank like Brad Pitt? You think like they're getting into the Instagram? I don't know. I don't want to go too down, deep down this rabbit hole because I don't know what his mental health status is. I really don't. I just know in the 90 day universe, he's crossed over. Natalie, th the whole situation to get back to Natalie, to bring her into context is he had messaged her, I'm going to say a year ago, essentially saying to her, I can get you on The Bachelor or The Bachelorette. And she was like, really? You know, how how can we do that? I'm under contract with TLC. And he's like, no problem. Um, anyhow, they had some back and forth and, and he was saying, you and I, I can pretend that we're a couple. Um, I can get us on a dating show. And she was like, sure. Then he exposes her, her DMs. So trying to embarrass her, make her look like, you know, she's like fame hungry whore. Okay. Uh, let's see. Pot, meat kettle. 
Anyway, I just find this story so bizarre. And you know what's worse? Can I just can I just rant about this for a second? I, I do not consider myself a journalist. I'm somebody who's been in the entertainment world. I started in morning radio on the Kane show for iHeartRadio, which was fantastic. We never considered ourselves journalists. None of us had journalism backgrounds. We were entertainers, right? And people would come on our show, tell their story. We do funny bits. But every single fucking, no media outlet, every media outlet from Fox News to NBC, everybody posted that he was dead yesterday. Did nobody like, I, I mean, I guess journalism really is dead. I mean, this is so bizarre to me. No, I expect from the Daily Mail and the Sun, like some of these tabloidy places that consider themselves, you know, I mean, they are kind of just tabloidy, right? They're going to post anything. And I, I don't think they do a I don't think they particularly care about vetting anything or getting a quote, but NB fucking C, foxnews.com, former, former Bachelorette contestant Josh Cedar says hacker posted false death report to Instagram. Correction. This is this is by variety. NBC News previously ran a story from Variety incorrectly stating that former Bachelorette could contestant Josh Cedar had died, citing a now deleted August 28th Instagram post shared to his account. The headline and article have been updated to reflect Cedar's August 29th Instagram post stating that he's alive and his account was hacked. Nobody like, like, aren't you guys? I mean, I work for a news station as a contributor of entertainment. And let me tell you, like, there's some serious journalists there, like they can find out people. So nobody from any of these mainstream bureaus, like, got his number, his address, sent somebody to go, go, hey, like, see if you can find a family member. Is this actually true? <sighs> Rant over. Anyhow, um, so if you followed him and followed his crossover, you see him a lot trying to hook up with various 90-day fiance people. I wish him well. Hopefully his mental health is good. Let's move on to funner, more interesting topics, like how hot Barry Plath is now. <laughs> Has anyone seen Barry Plath? Oh, my God. This man has done a transformation. September 5th is the brand new season of Welcome to Plathville season five. I'm going to bet the farm here that this season is going to be a short of Vanderpump Rules, some of the most talked about reality television that we have recently seen. So good. So good. Another trailer drop. They've dropped multiple trailers for this show. That's not that unique. But People Magazine even picked up Barry Plath's transformation. This guy went from a scrawny pipsqueak to the hottest thing you have ever seen. He's been working out with his son, Micah Plath, who we all know. Oh, my God, Micah Plath. So fucking hot. Um, he's of age, by the way, I can say that. And, like, these two dudes have been hitting the gym up there in Minnesota for the past several months. And dude looks fucking fire. Okay, I'm going to show you a picture of his trans transformation. Now, Kim has already moved on. Kim got a new man. Isaac, one of the boys, because, you know, they have 10 children. Isaac, his boss, who works down in Cairo, um, is now dating Kim Plath. Look at that fucking transformation. Oh, my God. Give me the HGH. I'm ready for the roids. God, he's so hot. Uh, so, so far, we don't know if he's dating anybody, but the house, the family is a hot mess. Here, let's play the trailer together. I have not watched this. The family is divided in so many ways. Divorce has been hard. My dad has done a whole 180. I'm ready to start dating. I don't support that. Same. While we were gone, Mariah moved out. I have the family that doesn't accept me. You can't stop. I tried and I tried. I'm done trying now. Oh my God, they text out music. I mean, please, who are we? Do a leap? I mean, yes. It is going to be so good. I cannot even tell you. Oh my God, do not hit the mic against the desk, sweetie. Mm. It is going to be so, so good. Okay. I cannot even wait. So that's going to be epic. Um, you know, they're, that family, I'll tell you what, you know, and Olivia and Ethan Plath have been on my show together. Olivia Plath has been on my show twice. And they always said Kim was out here for fame. And I'm like, no way. I mean, girl is like living in the Bible after 24 years of marriage. She has left Barry. Like, I guess the queen did want she wanted to be famous. So there we go. We are going to get all of it. I just, I said to Shman, my husband, I watched the, I watched 
from what Welcome to Plathville started as. You know, remember the kids never had seen a cell phone. They didn't even know what iPhone was. They'd never even heard of Steve Jobs. They thought he lives in Atlanta. I mean, they never drank a Coke, let alone a margarita. I mean, they had lived, I mean, they didn't even know what a tampon was. The girls didn't. They didn't even know how to use one. The boys never even heard of a tampon. I don't know how the fuck you don't even know what a tampon is. So to see them be so innocent and go from that to now, Mariah is like tatted up. Micah moved to LA to pursue his modeling career. Barry is on like probably some sort of steroids. Jack as can be. Uh, Kim is boning another dude arrested for DUI. Obviously, it had more than one margarita. She was like twice the legal limit. I mean, Ethan, I, think I can't keep like, what? He said to Schmidt, it's kind of sad. I don't know. I would feel like my life was sad. But I think maybe if you were related, raised super religious and you missed a lot of the world, you're like, fuck it. It's the best it's getting. All right. So we're all looking forward to that. Let's talk a little sister wives quickly. By the way, uh, Mondays, just during the duration of Sister Wives, every Monday you're getting double episodes on the Sarah Fraser show. You're getting a quick recap and all my thoughts of the night before's episode. And then of course you're getting the regular, you know, whatever my guest is, because Mondays I have guests on the Sarah Fraser show. So if you missed it, I always am going to add on my review of Sister Wives episodes to the end of this podcast. So you can catch it there. But the big news that's coming out, you know, from this past week is Leon, who is Mary and Cody's only child. Now, Leon is trans ref- and wants to be referred to as a they, them, had a secret marriage that everybody is talking about that reportedly happened back in 2022, just came to light this week, actually. So uh, Leon is married. And according to In Touch, Audrey Chris is... Her- I guess their wife. Um, they went in a courthouse in Colorado Springs on October 29th, 2022. The son and in touch obtained the marriage certificate. And um, they married themselves without an officiant present in front of their loved ones. But the big news of this is that Leon and a part of, I guess the new news that's coming out is that Mary and Cody, what, led to their divorce is Lee is Cody does not accept Leon. Cody doesn't accept their lifestyle, that they're trans. And because of that, Mary was, you know, going to pick and obviously picked Leon. And so they say that Mary and Cody, that's really what we're going to find out this season was the beginning of the end of their relationship. So maybe we'll find out more about the wedding. Maybe we'll see pictures, but that's sort of the big news. The other huge news coming out from sister wives uh, is enormous ratings. You know, like I said, it. somebody yelled at me on my TikTok. I was like, you better apologize for saying that Sister Wives is dead when they have the biggest fucking ratings of any reality TV show. Okay, sorry. Like, I'm not that married to that opinion. So, okay. Um, yeah, huge. Some of the, they have the, they have the highest rated, rated reality show in the past six months, actually along the lines of Vanderpump rules this past season. So over a four day period, because that's what they measure people watching live that night. And then three to four days later, Sister Wives brought in an audience of 4 million people. Huge, huge. You guys know, I mean, not that many shows get 4 million views. Uh, We're in succession territory. That's what I always say. Or is it secession, succession, whatever. Never watched it. I got too much, too many reality shows to watch. Sorry. So that's going really well. Uh, Also, if anybody is in Union County, Kentucky this week, can you go to the courthouse on August 31st for an 8 a.m. hearing for Tammy Slayton? (laughs) You know, she was cited for marijuana possession and drug paraphernalia. And on my Reddit, you can see the citation. You can get the courthouse address. If anyone is in Kentucky and can get access to go to the courtroom and get the hearing, please do it. Please, 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 please. We want you to do it. We would love a full report. So she is going to court there. And she is set to be in court. She's actually got two court dates coming up, but... um. August 31st at 9.01 a.m. in room D. Could someone go to the arraignment? 
I mean, can't the bitch have a smoke? That's what I've said. But I mean, I guess she's going to get something. She, It's illegal there to have marijuana and like drug paraphernalia, paraphernalia to me must mean like a pipe, right? Or a bomb or something. Girl loves a smoke. So let us know what happens if anyone can cover that. I would be so grateful. Um, oh, what else was really juicy? Oh, the other thing. Oh my God. Chantel from the family Chantel, also formerly of Pedro and Chantel from the 90 Day Fiance franchise, has come out, let everybody know that Asuelo and Winter are not dating, and also clearing the air that Winter did not give Asuelo herpes of the mouth. Thank you for that. Poor Hunter. Uh, poor, poor Winter. Hunter, Winter. Poor Winter from the family Chantel, who is Chantel's sister, Winter. Uh, uh, bloggers are trying to be messy, saying that Winter gave Oswelu that thrush on his tongue. No, she did not. She did not. And they're denying it. And that, like, absolutely not true. I mean, poor Winter. I hope she's not hurt by that rumor. I just think it's funny. I'd be like, oh my God, the fuck? Like, I did not give Oswelu <laughs> her piece of the mouth. Um. All right. Oh, the last thing I was going to say, too, is this is a shocker to nobody, but Christine Brown did give a tell-all interview after um, episode two of season 18, and she is saying that she and Cody were never soulmates, and she realized how unhappy she was in the marriage once she started seeing her children meet their lifelong partners. So I just thought that was interesting. I mean, she's so over him. So over him. And like I said, that's where I go to. How are they going to sustain this show? Like, what, How is this show sustainable when Christine's so done? Like she doesn't even, I mean, she wants to keep it friendly, I guess. But what are they going to be friendly about? Most of their kids are adults, with the exception of Truly. I just, I don't see how the show continues as is. I don't know, but maybe it does. Um, And that's, look, a good lead into if you... Missed Sister Wives, the recap that I put out on Monday. I'm going to play it for you right now. You can get, definitely go to my Reddit if you want to see more details about Tammy Slayton's citation for marijuana and drug paraphernalia. Um, and yes, become a member of the Reddit group. All right. Love you guys. Uh, I'm off to Tom Sandoval and the most extras tonight. And yes, I will have a full recap of Tom Sandoval and the most extras. Okay. Bye, guys.